You're only going to be locked up for the rest of your life. You got to have ways to cope. The new documentary, 26.2 to Life, chronicles San Quentin's 1,000-mile running club, training for its annual 26.2-mile marathon inside the prison's exercise yard. But it allows you to feel like you're doing something normal, that you're doing something that's not prison. First-time film director Christine Yu wanted to break down the viewers and her own preconceptions of inmates serving indeterminate and, in many cases, life sentences. I really only knew about prison life from what we see in Hollywood movies and uh, TV series and popular culture. So when I first walked into San Quentin, my initial perception was really off. Christine Yu spent six years visiting, volunteering, and documenting this inspiring rehabilitation program started by veteran marathon runner and coach Frank Runa. Named the club the Thousand Mile Club, the idea was to have the inmates run a thousand miles while they were at San Quentin. Hey, we're going in 10, 9, 8. The culminating marathon held each November since 2008 is only one of the film's story arcs and more of a backdrop for the equally dramatic backstories of the runners. Let's talk about the three characters that play the most prominent roles. Hey, Markel, what's going on? How you doing? What's up with it, man? Markel was somebody that I met on the first day that I visited San Quentin because he was the fastest man in the club. He was the gazelle, and I was immediately struck by his very gentle and soft-spoken manner. They have a lot of programs here, and you got a lot of outside people here, but this is still prison. Um, it gets violent. Markel looks awesome. He's got a nice stride going. Even though this was a film about running, I wanted to look at the club and prison life from a more diverse perspective. So while Markel was the fastest runner, Rasan was the slowest runner. This guy has a 55 to life sentence, but has an incredible sense of humor and a different way of looking at things. I decided to put in something positive and like not let these people think they write about me. Not let my son um, grow up thinking that his dad is a loser. Tommy Wickard is serving a 57 year sentence for murder and gang related activities. This doesn't happen in every prison. You got to remember, all I did was hang around gang members and do drugs and sell drugs and hurt people. Now I'm around coaches that are just like like my mom and dad that growing up with good people. I originally met his wife Marion, and so I thought, wow, this is an uh, would be an amazing opportunity to show what being a father or a husband from prison is really like. All right, now New York. Despite the prison marathon's six 90 degree turns, Markel the Gazelle Taylor wins the race in little over three hours. Tommy Wickard completed his 105 laps around and through the crowded prison yard under four hours. No one said it was gonna be easy, you're doing great. And Rossan, New York Thomas, predictably finished last. I'm supposed to be miserable. I'm supposed to be a failure. I'm supposed to give up. I'm supposed to die in here. The film doesn't overly play up the race for its primary drama or conclusion. The rest of the story is even more inspiring. My goal is to run under three hours, maybe qualify for Boston here, be the first one to do that. I knew that he had been denied parole twice, but you know, sort of shame on me for thinking that dreams don't and can't come true. So, you know, to, ha to have that goal and to maintain that dream from inside, I think says a lot about his mental and spiritual fortitude. Markel, get out of here. Markel was paroled on his third attempt after serving 17 years of his 15 to life sentence for second degree murder. He has since run the Boston Marathon twice, once under three hours, and has been sharing his story and the film with juvenile offenders around the country. I'm an ambassador for lifers, life incarcerated men and formerly incarcerated men. And what I experience and what I go through can help change policies and the way people are being treated, even from the outside or the inside. Markel works full time at a local supermarket while training for New York and other marathons and spends evenings back inside San Quentin, 
now as one of the Thousand Mile Club's volunteer coaches. California's Governor Newsom commuted Rahsaan New York Thomas's sentence after serving 23 years in prison. Uh, here in San Quentin, we call this the bottleneck. You have, uh, you go from dirt to asphalt, and if you step on a rock at 22 miles, you're, it's going to get your attention. Tommy Wickard is the current president of San Quentin's 1,000 Mile Club. His release date is 2045, unless he gets paroled sooner. I didn't want to make an issue film. I would like for the audience to, after having seen it, for them to decide if they think that our approach to incarceration is, uh, can be improved or not. Perhaps its most captive and important audiences have been at the first San Quentin screenings. The film is renewing the conversation about sentencing and rehabilitation, starting with the director of California's adult prisons, Ron Broomfield. And I think your discipline um, and your honesty and your commitment is going to inspire people to really look at the incarcerated in a, in a different light. People who are at the highest levels of the Department of Corrections and in the state government can see the potential that, you know, rehabilitation does work and hopefully that the film can be used as a, as a tool to advocate for more of that. Not only is it helping you from a mental aspect and a physical is also spiritual and it's all everything combined and it's more hands-on with people involved with helping you to reach your, your goals in life. For the PBS NewsHour, Mike Saray in San Quentin, California.